Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal C++ tutorial. In this video we'll be covering the topic of camera shake and how to get a result looking something like this. So you can see there I have two completely different looking camera shakes and that's just controlling the strength which will be part of the topic that we cover as we go through. Just to get started I'll cover a few of the prerequisite kind of setups just in case you wanted to follow along exactly or just wanted to know how I have the project set. So the first thing is that I've added two new input bindings in the project settings. Under the input, I now have a left click and a right click for the left and right mouse button, just named left and right click. So what I was pressing down in the example, the left click was doing the full force camera shake, so the really big kind of overbearing one, and right mouse click was controlling the smaller and more refined camera shake. The classes that I'm using to demonstrate this, the input bindings are being done in my character class. So that's going to be the class I'll be showing you the implementation of in a moment. And then on top of this, I've created a new folder named misc. And in here, I've created a camera shake class. So there's actually a class readily available inside of Unreal to handle camera shakes, which is pretty cool. To get this, all you need to do is right click, go new C++ class, and we want to show all classes here and then search for camera shake. The one that I'm using is this one here, which is the camera shake class. And I've just named this camera shake base. And you can see my custom camera shake base then appears below here as well. So when you have your camera shake class ready and a pawn or a character class just to add a binding to, you'll be ready to follow along exactly. Okay, so to begin, we are in the header file of the character class. I just wanted to show the two things that I've needed to add to the header file here. So this is building on the previous examples I've created. So this already has the move forward and move right functions. The thing that I've just added is a new void function named camera shake demo. This takes a single float value named scale, which we'll see why that's needed a little bit later. And then just below this, I've created a new U property with the edit anywhere specifier. This is a T subclass of the U camera shake class, and I've called this one cam shake. And this will just very easily allow us to assign a camera shake class in the editor so that we can play different camera shakes if we wanted to test things out. Then just above this, at the very top of the class, I've declared a delegate. Uh, so we want to use the declare underscore delegate underscore one param. All of this is case sensitive, so make sure that you've done this in the same way I have here. And I've called this one F shake delegate and this is just overriding the float. The way this works, uh, delegates will be a topic for another video, but just a very quick overview of this, the way that this is working, this is going to allow us to assign this delegate to a function call because in the input, in the class that we'll go over in just a moment, when we call the camera shake demo on the action binding, we're not gonna be able to override an action binding with a float, but I want to be able to control the scale of the camera shake when I press either the left or the right mouse click. So what we're going to do is assign our delegate to the action binding instead of our function directly. So that's why it's got the same float override as the function that we've just created. Okay, so over in the character class code file, there's two things that we want to add. These are going to be two bindings to our left and right click. And this is where that delegate comes in as well. So what we want is the player input component, then bind action. We're going to bind this to the F shake delegate. And then after this, this works like any kind of standard binding. So we want the text, which will be the left and the right click. So just do both of these at the same time. We then want to assign this to the IE underscore pressed. And I'll just shift along here. And then that will again be, of course, assigned to this object. And we're going to call the function then on the A character base. So we're getting the address of the A character base. And we want to call the camera shake demo on both. Now the difference and what the delegate is allowing us to do is we can then override what we're passing in to that function. So when I left click, I want to pass in a scale of one. So that's the full force of the camera shake. And on the right mouse click, I'm going to pass in a value of 0.1, which is just a very toned down scale of the camera shake. So that's why we're using the delegate, so we can get kind of two tests going at once with a single function. So they're the functions which are calling the camera shake. I'm then just going to scroll down a little bit here. And the final thing is to implement the camera shake function. So again, this is the same function I've just shown you in the header file. And this is super simple. All we want to do is get the world context. And then from this, we're going to call a function, which is the get first player controller. And that's just because the 
camera manager is what handles the camera shake and that's found on the player controller so we then want to call the player camera manager and then finally we want to call the play camera shake function this takes in two values this is going to be the type of camera shake we want to play which is why we've exposed our cam shake variable so we're going to pass that in here and it also wants to know the scale at which we're going to play the camera shake so again zero being nothing so it wouldn't shake at all and one being the maximum value uh, which will take in the full variables that we'll be setting in our camera shake class in just a moment so we're going to pass in the scale which is what's being overridden in the action binding delegate call okay so that is as difficult as it is to call a camera shake very very simple stuff here so what I'm going to do is we'll now move over to our camera shake class so have your C++ camera shake class open and ready to go as well okay so in the camera shake header file yours should only look a little bit different to this all I've needed to add is a public section so we've got a new public section here and I'll just drop that back over where it should be and then I've created a constructor, so that's just done with the U camera shake base, so the same name as the class as a function. By default, these classes come completely empty, so you will need to add those in to follow the next step. Over in the code file, what we want to do next is inside of the constructor that we've just created, we want to make sure we define that constructor here as well. Inside of this, I'm just setting some of the default values for what the camera shake will do. So the uh, kind of forces that will be applied to the camera. So the first three, we have the oscillation duration, the blend time, and the blend out time. So these are all default values inside of the class. These are not things that we're creating. So again, spelling and case sensitivity will be important here. With those three, I've just assigned some smaller values here. So you can see we've got 0 0.25, 0 0.05, and 0 0.05 again. So the duration is obviously going to be how long the shake will continue. The blend in and out time are the times at which the is trying to get to the maximum forces that we apply. So you can play around with starting the blend in time at zero to see how that feels. And again, the blend out time to see when that starts tapering off. Then below I have four rotation oscillations, or it's just rot oscillation, and this is controlling the pitch and the yule, and then I'm applying the amplitude and the frequency values. So these have been set to a random range using the fmath, and again you can see the values here and play around with what you want, but this is going to shake the pitch and the yule of the camera. And again, the amplitude is going to be how strong these forces are, and the frequency is going to be how many times it's attempting to shake over the oscillation duration that we've applied just above. Now, the great thing about exposing these as the C++ class is that we get this kind of opportunity here to set some random values. I will show you the blueprint counterpart in just a moment as well, uh, which is great because this is a much more kind of visual class, but it doesn't give you uh, range options if you were to use just the blueprint. It is either one value or another. So this is quite handy here as well. This step is completely optional though. You could just skip all of this and do everything in the blueprint because like I said, it is very visual and you'll see why in a moment we might not want to assign everything in C++ because there are a ton of different options. With all of this ready to go though, you can compile this and save. Everything should be ready to use now in the editor. So I'll just hop back over. Okay, so the final things that we needed to do back in the editor, I'm gonna to go to the blueprints folder, go to the character class, and remember inside of here, once you have this compiled and uh, maybe hot reloaded in the editor if you needed to, what we want to do is look at the character class itself, find our new variable that we've exposed, which is our cam shake, so we can see that here, and we want to assign the either C++ or blueprint class, which I'll show you in just a moment. So I'm just gonna go over the camera shake base, which is the one that I've made. And just to reconfirm by doing a quick test, this is the one that I've set up that when we press the left or the right click, we'll get two different kind of scales being applied to our camera shake. Okay, so from that, you now know that it's actually exactly the same oscillation, rotation, and everything like that being applied, but one is scaled at the full force of one, and one is scaled down to 0 0.1. So the other thing I wanted to show you, I've also come in and from the camera shake base class, the C++ version I've created, you can right click on this as with any other C++ class and choose to create a blueprint based on this. So I've already done this and inside of the blueprints and the misc folder again, I have my BP underscore cam shake. And this is kind of what I wanted to demonstrate that some classes you can expose things and start them in C++ and that's great. But the amount of options that we get, we can see here we've got the oscillation duration, blend in and blend out time as we've seen in the C++ code file. We've also got the pitch, yule, and roll frequencies. 
But on top of this, we also have the location, oscillation, and the field of view. And we've got all of these different drop downs and different things that we can play around with. So this is one of those classes where it's also nice to have a blueprint variation so that we can very quickly come in, play with some numbers, test it out, and not need to worry about recompiling and updating everything through the code file in that way when we're testing this. Because again, like I said, this is going to be very visual. You may find that the duration of 0.25 is too long. So we can quickly drop this down to one. We we'll change this to use the blueprint version now. And then if we save this, we'll see that we get a much shorter and kind of instant uh, camera shake going on. So it's going to be nice to have this as a blueprint class so that we can quickly update and test things out. And again, this is going to be easier to get an idea of what the blend in and blend out times are doing by quickly changing these numbers and seeing the results that you get. So it can be a very simple topic. Uh, camera shake is obviously going to be something which can be very useful and provide a lot of impact for your game. You do need to make sure that you don't make it overbearing and uncomfortable for the user. So this is something where quick iteration and a visual class like this can be very, very useful. So I'll leave that here for now though. As always, if you enjoyed the video or find this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That is greatly appreciated and really helps the channel to continue growing. Just in case you weren't aware, you can download all of the source files that I use and the projects that I create as I'm going through these videos over on my Patreon page. So do consider checking that out for some extra goodies, early access and things like that. And a big thank you to everyone who is already supporting me over on Patreon to allow me to keep making these weekly videos and just for showing your support to the channel. I'll leave that video here for now though. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.